Hi, I'm Scott, and today we're going to talk about one of the most common topics that comes up on our forum, how to diagnose brake problems. Coming up next on Goldwing Docs. <laughs> whoa, 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 hold on a second. Before we get started, I need to address the elephant in the room. Every time I post a new video, I get tons of comments saying, Hey, idiot, your throttle quadrant, it's, it's moving when you, when you twist it on the opening thing. You, you twist the throttle and it, it's like moving all around and it's loose. It's not supposed to be like that. Yes, I know. It was like that when I took the video that I originally used when I created that opening. The problem is this. A previous owner of this bike put this little lining bracket misaligned and then tightened it in place and mashed in the little button that holds this thing from moving. After I published the initial video that showed this, one of the users on my website said, hey, I've got a spare one of those, do you want it? I'm like, sure, so he sent it and I put it in there and as you can see, now it doesn't move. So you can all stop making comments on the videos about how the throttle quadrant moves when I twist the throttle grip because it was fixed years ago, but it still shows it because I'm still using that same opening. Maybe one day I'll refilm it and people will stop freaking out about the moving throttle quadrant. Okay, so let's start over again and onto the video. Okay, to begin with, I'm going to apologize right from the start. There's not going to be a whole lot of demonstrating in this video. There's going to be a lot of talking and explaining. Um, I published a video regarding brakes and how they work. Uh, I'm going to put a link to that video in the description. That video was one of our most popular videos. Apparently, not a lot of people understand how their brake systems work. And I apologize for the fan turning on in here. It's 17 degrees out. It's quite cold, so I've got the heat on in my garage. So uh, I have to tolerate a little bit of fan noise. So today we're going to talk about problems and symptoms that you can have with your brake system and what each one could be caused by and what it may indicate. There's actually, I've got eight different symptoms we're going to go over. And actually, the vast majority of these don't apply just to motorcycles. They also are exactly the same symptoms and diagnoses that you would have on automobile brakes. So if you are actually fixing your car brakes, most of this is going to apply for that as well. Okay, first, no pressure. You pull in your brakes, it goes right to the grip. There, it does absolutely nothing, as if there's no fluid in it at all. Well, there's a few different things that can cause that. One is air in the system. Air is extremely compressible, so when you squeeze it, instead of pushing the hydraulic fluid down to the caliper and pushing the piston out of the caliper, instead it's just compressing that air, so your, your, your brake lever just goes right to the grip and has no pressure at all. That's fairly simple. You need to bleed the air out of the brakes. You can't have air in your brake system or else it doesn't work. Second, you might have a leak in your brake system. So when you're squeezing this, instead of the fluid getting shoved down the line to the uh, caliper where it's pushing the piston out, instead it's squirting out somewhere. Uh, that's going to be pretty easy to find because first off, the fluid in your reservoir is going to go down. Every time you pump it, it's pumping out fluid of the reservoir and spraying it out somewhere, so eventually you're going to run out of fluid. This is a closed system, so you shouldn't ever have to add fluid to your brake system. If you are adding fluid, you've got a leak and you need to fix that. So if we have a leak and we're squeezing it, we're just basically pumping brake fluid overboard. That's a good reason why you might have no pressure at all. Lastly, if your brake fluid is low, the, if the reservoir is so low that instead of pumping fluid from the reservoir into the brake system, you're pumping air, guess what? You got air in your system. So again, you're going to be pulling that and you're going to have no pressure at all. So why, why would your brake reservoir be low? Well, as you use your brakes and as the brake linings wear, they get pushed out a little bit farther to make up for that lining that's gotten worn away. And so a little bit more fluid ends up staying down in the calipers. As that happens, the fluid that is going down there has to get replaced and that comes from the reservoir. So as the reservoir goes down, it's being pushed out into the calipers. If the reservoir was properly filled when it started, even when the brakes are almost completely worn out, there'll still be enough in here. But if you had low fluid and brand new brake pads, as those brake pads wear away, it needs more and more fluid to make up for the lost lining. You might get to a point where you're actually pumping air into your system, at which point you'll have no brakes at all. So if that's the case, you need to refill your reservoir and bleed the air out of your system. So that was our first symptom, no pressure. Two, 
spongy brakes. You pull in your brake lever and it might, it gives you some resistance, but it, you can actually pull it all the way to the grip. Um, and it's, it's not sharp and you don't have powerful brakes. Uh, you should, if, if you see here, I can, if I really squeeze it, I can almost get it to the grip. But if you're pulling it in and it's kind of spongy and it makes it all the way to the grip easily, you've got a problem. So there's a few things that be causing that. Again, we might have a little bit of air in the system. If that's the case, we've got bubbles in there. We might need to bleed air out of our brake system again because those, again, those bubbles are being compressed. Next, swelling brake lines. When the bike comes from the factory, it comes with rubber brake lines. The job of those brake lines is to not expand at all because you don't want the, the pressure in the brake system blowing up the lines like a balloon. You want them to stay small so that the pressure is then shoved down to the caliper. Rubber wears out over time, gets soft, and what happens is when you squeeze your brakes, it, it, that's exactly what happens. The rubber starts to swell and it's using up the power here to, to expand your brake lines rather than to engage the brakes. The best thing you can do to fix that, replace your brake lines. And actually, I would highly recommend you even just do that if your bike is a few years old because you can replace those rubber brake lines with what's called stainless braided brake lines, which is what I've done here on my bike. It's probably one of the best upgrades you can actually make to your bike. If you have braided stainless brake lines, they're still rubber lines, but they have a, a braided stainless steel sheath around the outside of it. And that sheath prevents the rubber from expanding. And because it's steel, it doesn't stretch at all. The difference in the braking that you get is like night and day. Instead of a, a little bit of a spongy grab right at the grab point as the rubber lines expand, instead you get razor sharp, powerful brakes. You squeeze it and every bit of power that you're putting into the brakes is actually affecting the brakes rather than expanding your brake lines. Uh, number three, and probably the most common cause of spongy brakes, failing seals. What happens is your seals, either in the master cylinder here or down in the caliper on the wheel, they get tired and old. And instead of holding back the pressure like they're supposed to, they might stretch a little bit. So when you're squeezing your brakes, instead of actually just pushing that brake cylinder out, the, the first bit is actually stretching the seal a little bit. And the seal's starting to bulge a little bit and, and the best thing you can do then, the only thing really, is rebuild. So you, when I say rebuild, people are get scared to say, oh my God, I'm gonna rebuild my brake system. No, it's not. You rebuild your master cylinder, it basically means you pull out the cylinder, you change the rubber seals, you lubricate it, put it back in. It's not that big a deal. We have how-to tutorials on the Goldwing Docs website on how to rebuild both master cylinders and your calipers. It's, it's not that big a deal. It's something that you can probably do as a beginner mechanic. Uh, we like I said, we have our tutorials that shows you step-by-step step how to do it. Anyone can. So if you have spongy brakes and you've never rebuilt either of those, maybe it's time. Number three, pump to firm. This is the most famous one. You're riding along and you want your brakes, but it takes a couple pumps before they get firm. So you might even have like one where you pull it in and you get nothing, but the second pull you get brakes. So it takes a couple pumps to get there. There can be all kinds of problems to cause this. Number one most common cause of this, worn seals again, either in the master cylinder or in the caliper. You pump up the brakes, it pushes that fluid, but some of it gets past the, the seal. And so because you haven't got enough fluid in there, you gotta let go and give it another pump to get extra fluid in there to make up for the stuff that squirted past the first time. Uh, another problem could be worn caliper wipers. I've had this actually happen on this bike. The wipers down on the, on the uh, cylinder on the, in the caliper that are there to wipe the dirt off the piston as it retracts, if they get worn and sticky, what happens is instead of sliding along the piston as it, as it gets pushed out, it, they stretch with the piston. And so when you let go, the piston retracts and the seals pull it back too far. So now you've got too much of a gap between the brake pad and the rotor. So the next time you go pull the brakes, the first pump pushes the piston out somewhat, and the second pump pushes it en enough to get to the rotor where you start engaging your brakes. And of course, as soon as you let go, those worn wiper seals pull it all the way back again, and you gotta do it again the next time. So if you're getting a double, you have to do a double pump to get full strength on your brakes, that's, that's something you need to look at. Number three, seized caliper pins. So you've got pins that the, ca the caliper slides back and forth on, 
and as the pads wear out, the caliper is supposed to slide on those pins to make up for the, the, the position of the pads are where they're supposed to be. Uh, if they get seized up and the caliper can't slide easily, particularly if only one gets seized up, and what happens then is your caliper engages unevenly and your pads end up wearing at an angle and it wears out your pads really fast. Uh, so if you're getting a double pump there, the first pump might be pushing out the caliper on one pin and the second one is enough to engage it, but then of course you're bending the one pin. So as soon as you let go, it bends it and pulls it back. And now again, you have to pump twice to get your brakes. So that's a, that's a very common cause if you haven't maintained your brakes properly and the, the caliper pins are seized up. Similarly, in motorcycles, we have alignment pins that go through the pads to hold the pads in place. Exact same thing can happen there. If you get corrosion on those pins, that, on the retaining pins, uh, they can hold the pads from uh, engaging in the rotor. Particularly, again, if just one of them is seized and your, your pad is then getting pushed at an angle uh, and then it gets pulled back. So again, Check your calipers for corrosion. Make sure everything is sliding and moving like it should be. When you put your calipers together, make sure you lubricate all those things that are sliding and moving around with appropriate high temperature brake grease because that's what keeps those things sliding and, and lubricating well. Rotor run out. This is not something we get a lot of on motorcycles. It's more common on cars, but what happens is when, if you overheat your brake rotors, they can warp. And so what happens is as the rotor turns, it actually moves a little bit from side to side. And as it does so, it pushes the piston back in farther than you would no, it otherwise would. So what happens is when you pull your brakes, you have to push the piston out and then you pull it a second time and it engages the rotor. And then once you let go, that rotor moving back and forth as it turns, pushes the piston back too far again. Now, if that's the cause of this, you're definitely gonna know because when you put the brakes on, particularly when you put the brakes on gently, it's you're gonna feel vibration right through the brake lever. Uh, so that's, that's a pretty much a dead giveaway if that's the cause of this problem. And last, not all that common, probably more common on cars than motorcycles, but if you have worn wheel bearings. If the, the tire is actually able to move because the wheel bearings are, are, are worn, once again, you pull the brakes, it engages. Once you let go, that worn wheel bearing can actually move that rotor similar to run out, uh, in, in which case it's going to push the piston back out too far again and you have to pump it a couple times to get it to push back out. If you have worn wheel bearings enough that it, this is actually happening, you have more problems on your hands than just brake problems because if your wheel is moving such that it can actually move the, the rotor that's affecting the piston, your wheel bearings are in a dangerous state. You need to re replace those wheel bearings. Okay, number four. You pump up the brakes and they're nice and strong, but as you hold them, it gradually then starts to sink and you lose it and you have to pump it again to get it back to firm. This is actually another really common one in cars. If in, if you have this on the car, 90% of the time you have a problem with your master cylinder. It's usually a, a, a leak in your diaphragm, your master cylinder, which uses vacuum from the engine to give you brake assist. There's no such thing in the motorcycle, so that's not the cause here. In motorcycles, the most common cause of this is worn seals inside your master cylinder. You squeeze the brakes on, but those worn seals let a little bit of fluid squirt past. So, and as that, that pressure pushes that fluid past, you lose the pressure on the brakes, your handle gradually sinks, and then you gotta let go and, and reapply the brakes because you've lost the, the fluid as it squirted back up into the reservoir. If that's the case, you're in for a rebuild again. So not a big deal. Like I said, you just gotta replace the piston seals and, and we have the how-to on our site, like I mentioned. The other thing that can cause a firm and then a s gradual sink is leak. So if I squeeze this and it slowly squeezes into the grip, it might be because as I squeeze it, it creates pressure, but then as it's squirting out somewhere, that pressure goes away and the handle sinks to it. Again, if this is the case, you're gonna know it because you're gonna start losing fluid and pretty soon you're gonna run out of fluid and then you'll have no brakes at all. So definitely, and obviously you're gonna find fluid leaking out somewhere. It's, it's not just gonna disappear. You'll find drips on the ground or, or in the bodywork somewhere. Number five. It brakes are hard and you can't move it at all and you have no brakes. So you're basically squeezing it and it's not moving and something's obviously wrong because you can't stop. Okay, 
obviously something is seized. It could be the piston is seized in the caliper. It could be the master cylinder piston is seized inside of here. That's typically what you see if a bike has been let to sit for a long time. And what happens is you have moisture in there. It corrodes the insides of either the master cylinder or the, the caliper itself. That piston corrodes into the caliper and basically it's not gonna move, it's seized. Most often the best way to fix that is to replace the caliper. Uh, same goes for the master cylinder. If it's corroded so badly that it's actually seized, you're likely not gonna get that master cylinder or the caliper to ever work properly again. Because the seals depend on a very smooth surface on the inside of the cylinder, and if it's corroded away and pitted from all the corrosion, it's never gonna seal right. Your brakes are not gonna work right. At that point, you're looking at replacement parts. But the, if the bike has not been sitting for a long time, a second option that causes this sometimes, and it's actually more common than you might think, old rubber hoses again. The insides of the hoses are rubber, and rubber over time degrades, particularly in contact with brake fluid. And what can happen is that rubber inside the, the brake lines swells shut. And so you can't force any fluid through it because the, the brake lines have collapsed. So if you squeeze in it and, and you can't get any brakes at all, um, and the bike is not seized, perhaps you can actually try and retract the pistons and you see they're actually moving, uh, then you may be looking at the hoses. So there's a good way to try that. If you, if you have seized brakes that way, if you unscrew the banjo bolt from your master cylinder, then give it a squeeze. If it moves with this opened up, which means you're gonna squirt brake fluid out of here, that tells you that, hey, this, this master cylinder piston is free, it's not seized, the problem is somewhere down the line. So then, unscrew the banjo bolt at the caliper end. And if you can still move it, then you know the caliper is seized. If you can't move it, then you know it's the hose. So process elimination. Number six, squealing and or grinding brakes. So you're riding along and you gradually put on the brakes and you hear Okay, in cars, that means something entirely different. Cars on their brake pads have a little piece of metal, it's called a wear indicator, and its only job is to scrape along the rotor when the brakes are almost worn out so that they make a horrendous noise and make the clueless driver say, oh my God, something's wrong with my car, and they go to the dealership because they don't know anything about cars, and the dealership charges them $1,000 for new brakes and whatever else they find wrong with the car at the dealership. So. It's not actually that the brakes are worn out on a car, it's just that it has that little scraper that's making a loud noise to make people worried about their car so they don't run the brakes out and, and completely wear them out. Motorcycles, different. Motorcycles have very, very hard rotor surfaces. Uh, you can get ceramic brakes that are hard. I don't really recommend hard ceramic brakes for motorcycles because it causes unusual wear on the rotors. Motorcycles are designed with extremely hard rotors that are not normally machined like cars and softer organic brake pads. Um, and when you put harder brake pads on there like ceramics, not only does it cause excessive wear on the rotors much faster than it would otherwise, and those rotors are expensive. They're not $40 car rotors. The rotor on this motorcycle is several hundred dollars. So you don't want to wear out your rotors with hard brake pads. But when you do have hard brake pads, like a ceramic brake pad, you can actually get vibration and it's high frequency vibration and that's what can cause that squeal. Not to say that there's not something wrong from a squeal. You may want to check and, and see if something's gotten overheated. But if you are getting squealing brakes and you've got ceramic brake pads, perhaps think about maybe changing to some OEM organic brake pads. Now, if you're getting grinding, that's something else entirely. Usually grinding means you have ignored your brakes, you haven't been doing your checks, and you have now worn the brakes to a point where the pad is gone and you're now grinding what's left of that metal brake pad directly against the rotor and you've just destroyed $100 worth of rotors. So if you hear grinding, kick yourself because your carelessness has caused a problem that you could have otherwise avoided. That said, you can get grinding faster than you expected if you do have a seized caliper pin. Because once again, if you have a seized caliper pin, it's gonna start engaging the brake pad at an angle. And it's gonna wear away the corner of that brake pad very quickly. And the next thing to engage is that pad itself instead of the lining. So now, you, again, you got metal against metal on that rotor, you score the rotor, destroy the rotor. So uh, it's, 
it's important to maintain your brakes at least once a year. Pull it apart, have a look, make sure things are lubricated, make sure things are operating the way they're supposed to. You shouldn't have that problem if, if that's what the kind of maintenance that you're doing. Number seven, vibration. You're riding along and you apply the brakes and you're Now, everybody says, oh my God, your brake rotors are warped. Every time somebody has this in their car, they hit the brakes and the steering wheel shakes and they got vibration. They're like, oh, you warped your brake rotors. And of course the dealership will tell you exactly that. Oh yeah, your brake rotors are warped. You need to go and, and uh, get them turned and or replaced. Okay, so actually, you know what? I'm gonna digress for just for a moment. Yes, brake rotor warping on automobiles is fairly common. And it's more common than you would think, but it's not caused by what you would think. People will say you overheated your brakes and you warped your rotors. Not really. That's not really what the cause of warped rotors normally is on cars. What it's normally caused by is the garage monkey who used this to put the lug nuts on your car instead of a torque wrench. Yes, impact wrenches are great. They're really fast. You can zip them on and get on to the next customer, but they're not accurate. And these guys, I've had cars come back from a dealership where they did you know, some kind of dealership work and they had the wheels off. And I've had lug nuts that I measured anywhere from 40 foot pounds to 200 foot pounds. And on my car, they're supposed to be 100. So when you get all these lug nuts that are on there unevenly, exerting uneven pressure, and then you heat up that piece of metal that's, that's being clamped on there unevenly, guess what happens? Your rotors warp. So if you want to never have warped rotors on your car, guaranteed every time any shop has your wheels off, bring your car home, get your torque wrench out, retorque all those lug nuts to the proper torque, I guarantee you will not warp your rotors. Okay, off of cars, onto motorcycles. Vibration, the number one cause of vibration on brakes, actually, and on cars, from when you apply the brakes is glazed rotors. What happens is, let's say you are riding through the twisties and you're going to high speed and you're all over the place and you're having a great time and all of a sudden you come around this big hill and at the bottom of this big hill you see a stop sign and you're doing 80 miles an hour. So you haul on the brakes and you come up to that stop sign and then you come to a stop. So here I am, I'm stopped at the stop sign and I'm waiting and now there's like a tractor trailer who's driving at three miles an hour across and behind him is another tractor trailer behind him is grandma and her station wagon and so you're sitting there for a minute waiting and waiting and waiting meanwhile your brakes are baking themselves they're almost glowing red because you came down from 80 miles an hour to nothing and now your brake rotors that are sitting there at 600 degrees you're holding and clamping your brake pads against those 600 degree rotors and you're basically baking those pads directly into the rotors now what happens is it actually, when you release the brakes, a tiny bit of that brake lining from the brake pads stays on the rotor because it's been baked in there and, it, and you aren't getting that off. Once it's been baked in there, it's in there for good. You can see this on cars a lot more often if you pull the wheel off and if you look at your car rotors and you'll see like an imprint of the brake pad at certain positions around the rotor, that's exactly what causes that. The problem is the co coefficient of friction on the brake rotor of bare metal and bare metal where that brake pad was is different. So as the rotor turns, you apply the brakes, you get a certain amount of braking power, but when it hits that little bit where the braking pad is, it just grabs a little bit more and then it lets go as it goes past. So as each wheel rotates and you pull the brake on, as those little imprints of pads hit the pads, you get boom, 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 boom. So everybody says, oh, my brake rotors are, are warped. Well, no, it's not. It's just brake pad residue left on and baked onto the brake rotors, and that's where that's coming from. So on cars, you can fix that fairly easily just by getting your brake rotors turned. You, they put it on a lathe, they scrape off a layer of metal, which includes that residue from the brake pad, and then they put it back on and everything's good. Motorcycles, they're, like I said, they're very, very hard, the rotors. You can't really turn them. So you can try and scuff it. If they're glazed a little bit, you can try and scuff it. But for the most part, you're just gonna have to live with it until it starts to wear away. And over time, they will eventually wear away and it'll go away as long as you don't keep doing it over and over again. And of course, if you do somehow manage to bend a rotor and you get a little bit of run out, which means side to side movement as the rotor turns, then yes, uh, 
you're gonna get vibration and there's not a whole lot you can do about that except replace the rotor. And like I said, break out the wallet because it's, it's gonna hurt. Most common cause of rotor run out on motorcycles is accidents. If you hit, hit it on something, if you dump the bike, something hits the rotor that's not meant to hit the rotor, especially if the rotor's hot, you're gonna get some run out, likely. Okay, on to the last one, dragging brakes. So you're not, you're riding along and you aren't touching the brakes at all, but they're dragging. And you know, if you shift to neutral and coast, you can feel it's actually, you're, you're braking. So all the time you're riding, your brakes are on. Um, you're gonna probably know this because you're gonna start smelling burning brakes as you're riding along because the brakes are on, you're, you're dragging them all the time. Uh, more common on the rear than the front, usually. Goldwings have a problem with this. I mean, there's no way, no two ways around it. They do have a problem, and the problem is right here in the master cylinder, or rather the reservoir. The number one cause of this on Goldwings is the return port inside the reservoir. So when you let go of the brakes, the rotor, the tiny bit of rotor run out, pushes that piston back, pushes the fluid back up the lines, past the seal, and back up into the reservoir. So that's, that's how it's supposed to work. And when it comes in the reservoir, it comes in through this tiny, tiny little return hole. It's like a pinhole size. Now what happens is if that hole gets clogged, it basically is as if you're holding the brakes on. So the fluid can't move back up in the reservoir, it can't get cut back up. So it's basically holding the brakes on. So what causes this? Most common cause is when people change the brake pads on their motorcycle, and they push that piston back into the caliper. Now, if you remember, all the nasty fluid and junk and debris and everything, gravity pulls that down into the caliper and that's where it sits. So when you retract that piston back in to fit the new pads, you're pushing all that sludge and crap all the way back up into here, into your reservoir where it clogs that return hole. So don't do that. When you're replacing the pads, before you retract that piston, open the bleeder valve. So when you retract the piston, instead of shoving that nasty sludge up into your reservoir, it just squirts out of the bleed nipple. Then you can put it all back together, top up your fluid with nice fresh fluid, and you won't have this problem. So what happens if you do have this problem? You can usually clear it out with, a lot of people use like a guitar wire, like the smallest guitar wire, if you, or maybe a, I use a, a wire brush. I'll take a, a, a wire brush, I'll just clip off one of the bristles, hold it in needle nose pliers, and it's just enough you can get into that hole and clear the sludge out, and that will usually fix it. If not, you may be looking at a master cylinder rebuild. Another problem that can cause this, seized piston. Again, same problems. If we have corrosion in there and the piston is starting to seize against the caliper, then yes, you can get it to the point where it won't retract and now your brakes are locked on. Uh, you can also get that less common from a seized seal, but it's usually just the, the piston itself see, uh, corroding against the caliper. Seized caliper pins, far more common. Those pins that allow the caliper to slide back and forth as they wear, if they get corroded and it's not sliding, you push it on and now it's stuck on and it's not letting it slide back, now your brakes are on or dragging and you're gonna have to take the brakes apart and clean and lubricate those pins. And remember the motorcycle also has pad alignment pins inside the caliper, those two can bind up a seize and seize the same way as the caliper pins, so same thing goes. If they're seized up and bound up, then you need to clean, pull them out, clean them, lubricate, put it back in. A more common cause of this, not as common as the return port problem, but with old brake hoses. Remember how we talked about collapsed brake hoses not being able to turn on your brakes or pull on your brakes? Same thing can happen. It might not be fully collapsed. There's enough that if you pull on the brakes, it can force the fluid through, but there's not enough pressure coming back to force it back through that, that collapsed hose, which means the piston is pushed out and your brakes are dragging. Again, best thing to do, replace your brake lines with some quality braided stainless steel brake lines. And that's it. That's my eight categories of brake failure problems and the symptoms and, and how to diagnose and hopefully fix them. If you have any other questions or comments, please leave them down below. You can always check out our Goldwing Docs forum. We've got tons of people that, that come up with these ideas all the time. And, and if even if you don't have problems, come on and help someone else who does. We've got lots of experts, but lots of people that need help. So if you need, you've got some expertise, you wanna help out, come visit our forum, goldwingdocs.com. And of course, the last bit. Nobody ever watches this part, so if you've made it this far, thank you, congratulations. You don't win a prize, but hey, appreciate it.
If you do like what you've been seeing on these videos and you want to see more like them, please click subscribe down below and click that little bell. Go ahead, leave us a comment or two. Let us know what you think. Do you like what you're seeing? Do you have ideas or something else you would like us to do? We love the feedback, positive or negative. We love everything you have to say. Thanks for watching.